Mm-hmm. Yes, it's the Chit Chat Show with me, the Alegota One Sports. My name is Ida Fimat, USA Organet. And uh, I have with me a man that I'm actually his worst critics. That's the way everybody sees it. But I mean, I've, I've, I've explained in many conversations with people that I don't have a problem with the man, I have a problem with the office. And like people talk about the president, and I ask people every day, do you have a personal issue with President Buhari? The answer is no, because he didn't take it. Why would he take it? But you have a problem with the office of the president. And most times in Nigeria, it's hard to divorce the person and the office. But I always try to say, let's do that. And he started with the most difficult job in the world, the job of running the Nigerian Professional Football League. He's the chairman of the LMC, which is a league management company, as well as the second vice president of the Nigerian Football Federation. And those two, those two bodies have like the most critical job in the world. You know why? Because... They are working for the most vociferous, the most critical, the most crazy football fans in the universe. Brazilians and English people don't come any close. So satisfying us is very difficult. But then, a couple of weeks ago, someone called me and said, come on, you're always attacking this man. Why don't you hear from him? I said, okay, fair hearing. I'm going to hear from him. Because that also will prove that really, this is not something personal. This is about the office. I have with me on the Chit Chat Show on Elevator TV, Malam Shaudiko, the chairman of the LMC. Malam Shaudiko, you're welcome to the show. Thank you very much. That's my pleasure. And um, I've had your introduction. I don't, I don't see anybody as a critic. I don't, uh, I don't see it that way, honestly. Because you see, um, when we are doing this job, naturally nobody will uh, believe the way you are, you are doing things. If you are going, um, for example, if you are leaving Abuja today to go to Lagos, somebody will go to Lakoja, you will still get to Lagos. Somebody will go through Mina and through Elorim, and you will still get to Lagos. So it depends on the view that you that you have it. You know, at the end of the day. But at the end of the day, until you see the, uh, I've just been reading so many things about our our letter. Um, uh, chief of staff, if all of a sudden that he died, everybody realizing he's a good man. Everybody realizing, most people realizing he has done a good job, he has done this, he has done that. All those things were not out in the public before. Yes, <laughs> well, I, was, uh, I, was, I, was, I was actually shocked at that. And anyway, I, I, never, yeah, knew course, the, course, I never knew the man yeah. and he, he never did any job that was directly related to me. So I was not one of those who really was critical of him, but I also did not find myself in the group of people who were saying anything at his death because I really don't get it. My only cons- confusion was the fact that we had that number of crowd at his burial, which for me was surprising. If somebody was arrested and sent to court in Lagos for having a birthday party, that was surprising to me. But well, that's not what I want to discuss because I really don't that's have... A, that's a different matter altogether. But <laughs> yes. yeah, part, of the, part of the things that I found when he's... Uh, part of the people that I'm saying, his favorite quote was that... Uh, the job looks easy when you're another one doing it. That's what, that is what I've always given on this table. The job looks very easy when you're another one doing it. Once you're the one doing it, then you see it from a different uh, perspective completely, and then you can try to understand how this is it. If today I sit down and start telling you what, like, uh, myself, uh, I'm a Jupini, Nduka Erapo, and my board members and other board members on the NFL, and for the three of us that have been doing, I've been trying to do for many years to get these things right, to get these things sorted. You you marvel at it, you will not believe it. But we leave it for we leave it for posterity to to judge okay. it because okay. we know we are doing we are I doing the right thing. You know, so. I am almost tempted to want to believe that line. But you see, it's hard for me to believe. You know why? Now I'm I'm, I'm going to take it one by one. I'm going to unbundle this thing one by one. And honestly, some people deserve credit, no matter how bad things are. You mentioned a name just now, Unukara, but I can't even find a fault with that man. I, I would always give him credit for the job he did, the, the effort at his age. Okay. I mean, okay. When, he, when, he was, when, the, when he was doing that job, who was his second in command? He, no, nobody talks about second in command. I mean, it's like Nigeria. Okay, no, for example, for example you, are, we walk, we walk you were together. his second in command. Okay, we work together as family. Yes. Now, now, I'm, now I'm doing this work. Who's my second in command? You send me to Kayarabo, you work with me. Okay, no. Four hours. No, I no. Do that nah, together. So, nah, this is, you know, so this, just, is this is the variation. This is the variation in that first and second in command. Anything goes wrong in Nigeria is the president. Nobody's talking about Usibanjo. Nobody cares. Well, Obama was the president of my America for eight years. Nobody cares about, uh, what's his name? The, the 
Joe Biden. Oh, Just an oh, average Joe. So what, we run, what, we, I, what we run is what we run is a collective uh, government where all decisions, everything has to do has to go through a process where everybody oh, agrees with it. Not that would, individual where everybody does. Anyway, let's let's, okay. let's move on. We get let's there. move on. Let's move on past that. So first off, let's forget about uh, the personal issues. Yeah. Let's deal with the league. The league seems like the proverbial one step forward and ten step backward. Most times when you ask them, okay, the, the question is, where do we even start from? Is it the TV rights? Is it uh, title sponsorship? Is it administration of the league? And then the problem of club not even following the rules or the articles of association that brings them together. So let's break it down from one to the other. Last year, one of the biggest news that came out that looked like the turning point for us. I'm an OTT person. I do an online TV. And I know that once that announcement was first made, it was made from like rumors. And I said to the first person who forwarded that information to Melawale Kodra, I told him that, look, whatever happened, if this comes true, Shehudiko would have performed miracle bigger than what Jesus did. But with my senses, I don't see it as possible. So I went to start looking for Nest TV and their numbers and who they are, what's, where's the money going to come from? Nest TV was announced. I wouldn't have had problem, but the problem I started having was when I look at how we celebrated I tell you sponsorship and it didn't turn out to be what was promised. So can you give me more light into this Nest TV? Because it affects my business directly. Nest TV deal, what is the 411 of that deal? Well, you see, that is where we always uh, have the problem. Because most times we do things and we are easy to judge, we are easy to jump. You know, a simple uh, contact, hey, hi, what is the details of this? You will get more details and be able to open your mind as a person, and then which you can be able to use to open up to whoever you are talking to, your fans or your crowd or your TV people to know what it's all about. You know, we try to, we held several press conferences where we break down the whole transaction the way, the way it should be. But, you know, it depends. Uh, when, you are, when you are taking a road, uh, let's travel. It's very difficult for people to understand where you are going. Yeah. Even you just admitted it. So uh, we are doing something that has not been done before. That is unusual. That is not the normal things uh, that the people understand. What people understand is that somebody will just come and buy your TV right. Oh, that you have bought my TV right for a Liberty TV. And that is it. You pay me X amount of money. And every time, if you like, you show the game. If you like, they show the game. That would, that's what people are used to. But absolutely, that is not what we are, what we are trying to do. We sat down and look at the, where we are coming from. Where were the gaps? And we sat down and look at the international, the international uh, brands that we all cherish here today. How are they structured? What are they doing? How are they, how are they doing what they were doing? And, and this has been my own mind for me as Biko for very, 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 for very, very many, many years. You know, that is the way, that is the way to go. And um, we now say, okay, let's go back to the basics. What is the problem? To start with, who produced the English Premier League? IMG. It's not Sky. It's not Sky. IMG. It's a company called uh, IMG and the Premier League. They yeah. have a company that they formed together called IMG Premier League Productions to produce the Premier League. Yeah. Who produced the La Liga? Media Pro. Media Pro, yeah. Media Pro is the, big, is the biggest uh, TV company in La Liga. They only give it to the, the companies to do that. But why do we now have to come to Nigeria and do it differently? The first thing we come to Nigeria to do is to go and load the production of Supersport. Yes, we agreed to do it, but is that the way to go about it? No. Because that's the only option at that time. Because Supersport now assume that they will produce your league for you. They will also show it in their network and they will pay you money. They end up spending more money on production than even the money they are paying you. Because they cannot monetize that money any, any, other, any other way again. And that's the reason why at the, uh, that's, that's the reason why at some point when the economy now turns turns upside down, all their money is dollarized and everything, they have to take a decision. Look, let's go back to our core business. Buy content and aggregate it and show it to customers and then they pay their subscription and we are okay. Then to, then to maintain a huge production unit where we maintain staff, we pay the pension, we have to pay security, we do everything. What is the what is the what, what is the cost-benefit analysis? So they have to drop one. They actually drop the production unit. At the moment, they have no production. They don't have no content to show. And at the end of, by the time they did that, they left the Nigerian, Nigerian uh, NPFL bare because we have no production capacity in Nigeria. To, so today in Nigeria, the only people that have production capacity to do any proper football match for you is passport. 
We have seen how uh, the national broadcaster tried to produce a, a match in uh, Nigeria, but in Benin. In Benin, it was a huge, huge, huge disaster. Yeah, because, disaster. And, and, it's not their, and it's not their fault. It's not their fault. If the country have over, over the years built in a proper production uh, plan, either from the public broadcaster or from the private broadcasters and everything, everything will have been fine. Even in South Africa, for example, where Spurs continue to produce everything, but they're not producing all the matches. No. They, they built they built in some small, small production unit across the country where they hire them, they produce matches for them and give them the fees that they pay them. So those those people are independent production uh, production people to do that. So companies like that. So basically what we said we should do, even even when the premier when the, we had issues with the super sport, it's not issue anything to do with anything, just commercial issues and financial uh, economic issues, nothing like that. What do we do? We still have an uh, understanding with Spurs Sport after tomorrow. If we can produce uh, proper content and everything, and we can put it on the table, they'll be interested. They will be. It's there. It's there in the part, in the part of what we agreed to do. So, but what did you do? We said we are going to build a production capacity. The first thing we did in 2017, when we had an issue with Super Sport, was go and approach NTA. Remember, we signed an MOA with NTA? Yes. NTA had six, uh, had six HOV vans, which the, which the Nigerian government used public funds to buy. For the 2009 under 17 World Cup, and those and those OV vans are meant for football coverage to start with. Head That's cameras, right. twelve cameras, stuff like that. The legacy of that hosting that tournament was supposed to have been those those uh, OV vans will have been deployed by NTA and empowered by the whoever also NTA the government or whatever to be producing domestic sports. Yeah, so that we can, just like South Africa <coughs> is benefiting from Africa the that. World Cup. From that. But two in Abuja Stadium, they are they all this crap. Some are in Inugu, some are in Kaduna, some are in all this crap. We don't send MOU with NTA. Okay, NTA, let's send MOU with you. Uh, let's the league go and see where we can find money, find investors, take over this OV van. Let's set up an independent production unit for Nigeria. Partnership between NTA and the private sector, uh, maybe the league can be part of it. But the focus of the the focus of the production is to make sure they cover the league, and then they can also get into the entertainment industry. If you go to Media Pro, it's spent. They do everything is spent from movies to La Liga, yeah. TV news and everything. Live, live everything. Uh, concerts so, and the rest. Live concerts. So it's a huge entertainment body uh, production unit that create jobs across the country and independently run, but they run on the back of La Liga because they make a huge revenue from covering La Liga and, think, and getting paid by that. So we said we could do something like that. And we used even our contact with, uh, with La Liga and approached Media Pro to be the partners of that uh, production unit. We went, uh, we went around, we found the money. I went to, uh, we had a meeting, we had some conversation with PGDF, with uh, some other people in the oil industry. PGDF only, their job is to train uh, capacity. They were ready to look at whether they could uh, train people People across the country, and the way we are looking at it is to say, Look, let's not do what the passport did. They built their production in Lagos, every stuff is in Lagos. All the money, all the motor, all the equipment are in Lagos. If they don't want to do much in Abuja or in Kano, or where they have to move people 60 people for Lagos to the venue and everything. Imagine the cost too expensive. So they, Hotel, so, so we said, Okay, flight. we now we now said, If we can have uh, those six bands and we can repair them, we can now use some and train people in each of the match venues. Government should come with this their program and train people on the camera and everything in each of the match venues. And those guys will be independent and they'll be empowered to go and be doing their businesses. They only come on match day and book them and they work for you, you pay them and, and, and that is it. And then we we'll put each of the cars in the, each of the OV vans in the six zones. So on match day, the OV van will not travel more than three, four hours to the match venue. And then the people are in the city, you only pay them a stipend. You have, you have the cameraman, you have the cable people, you have the director and everything. You have trained them already. Only maybe one person will come who is the expert to connect everything. That will have drawn the production cost from about 15 million a match to maybe about 3 million or 4 million a match. Less than that. To do that. So that's the whole plan we built up at that time to do that. We are, we are finding the money, we are finding everything. We approach even the Sovereign Wealth Fund of Nigeria to see whether they could invest in that and do that. I have all the documents on this. The meetings we did on that. But this is not, are not public. So, if we have been able to succeed on that and build that production unit, that's a foundation. Because any league that doesn't have the production unit produces content 
and sell the content, you can never make money. Yeah, you can't. That's the zero. That's the zero. Every spot in the world live and breathe TV. And the TV is production. Not just production. Proper production that is quality that can be sold anywhere in the world. If you want to have you, that content. If you recall, in 2017, I was in Kano. Yeah. In 2017, when we were playing the Super Six, I was in Kano. And I had a chat. I remember I had a chat with you. And I said that, look, I am yeah. starting a production company. Now, it's at the baby stage. But give me two years. I would have all the equipment and I might be in Lagos. I'll be able to produce matches for you in Lagos or other states around. Uh, we didn't follow up on the conversation anyway. It didn't end. It didn't end because. Yeah, I saw, yeah. I saw, I saw because no, no, no. I, it's something that we are never close. It's part of the bigger picture that we could have built. I did build in that day when we, are, when we are building that project with the NTA, everything, everything is okay. We could have done it. But in the end, anyway, let's not go too deep on that. But that's the business plan on that. We try to do that. And unfortunately, the MOE is still there on the table. But because uh, there was budget issues in 2018, if you can remember, yeah. all the support we're supposed to get, we're supposed to get from the people like the PTPF, like the Petroleum Coalition, the, the Coalition Fund, and some other people, even, even the NTA to have some budget and the money to prepare to do that, couldn't happen. And, and so we couldn't go with that project. So what, what we did now, we now brought in uh, Fox TV. We brought Fox in Nigeria. Folks were ready to come to Nigeria and set up in Nigeria and do exactly what we are trying to do here. Adopt this project and continue uh, running like that. They have this. They have the same kind of project they did in uh, in uh, Dutch League. You know, it is Fox that invested yeah. the money yeah. and took over the production and did everything. Yeah. And everything. Yeah. Argentina the same thing and everything. So they are ready to come and do the same thing in Nigeria. We signed the non-disclosure agreement already. That's why we couldn't make it public. I sent that document to Morocco in uh, January 2010. We brought them to Lagos. There are people in Lagos that know Fox were in Lagos. The entire delegation of Fox led by the Vice President of uh, Europe and Africa were in Lagos. We held the, we held the confidential meeting at the Echo Hotel with all the, with all the, uh, with all the um, well. corporate bodies. No, the corporate bodies. Because we first invited the corporate bodies. Come on, but look, this is the vision of what you want to do. If you are doing it, will you be involved in it? All the big names in Nigerian corporate were there in that meeting at the airport hotel. We locked our we locked the room. We have more than fifty brands now were there. We just everybody was saying if folks are coming, we do it, we do it. We flew to Abuja, we met with the NTA, NTA buses, AIT buses, everybody and everything was sorted out. So we now signed a proper we, we agree a proper contract with Fox. I was in London several times meeting in, in Amsterdam, my clubs. We did so many resolutions with our clubs also to, to approve the deal. Fox were ready to come in here to do a total, what we call total commercialization and, and exploitation of the commercial rights of the league, not just the TV and even the other sponsorship. Because it's very simple if you do that. You produce the content, you get six elite, elite sponsors or seven elite sponsors, and then you get the original revenues and everything, and you're good to go. Because they'll put the content on their own uh, ESPN and yeah. Fox. And that time, they, own, they can put it in London into, and that into there. They can also sell it. The, the business plan was so huge. The revenues now come with the Nigerian football to something else, whatever. The, the contract was agreed. Everything was supposed to be opened. The clubs met. We met in a Patel Court in May 28. When we had the friendly with, uh, I think, with Congo before the World Cup. And we approved the contract on that meeting in Potapa. But we couldn't make it public because of the, non the NDA we signed. We are supposed to have signed it immediately after the World Cup or it. Everybody knows after the World Cup, how everything went here. Yeah. What could, uh, what could Shao Duko did? What could Amadou Pinik did? What could Shao Akin Yemi did? What to revive for Saudi? Nobody could do what my clubs would do. We only keep hoping we can solve the problem, we can solve the problem. No investor will come and invest under that kind of unstable and a toxic environment. It's absolutely impossible. Especially with the kind of money that are going to be invested. And everybody has seen what folks have done with the, with the Wafu Cup. Because at that time, they, they did the Wafu Cup in, uh, in Ghana. In Ghana. In 2017. In 2017. <clears throat> and I tell you, the final match, Ghana, Nigeria, folks put it all over their network across the world. In Asia, in America, and everywhere. That match alone, both the viewer went to over 100 million uh, households. A simple match of home base Nigeria, Ghana, Fox in Ghana, went to. So they were they were like, ah, 
if they have this, I mean, most of the people that are watching are not really or involved. Oh, yeah, or that, that, oh, is Africa. Africans, it's Africans and Nigeria all over the world that were watching. They were saying, if now we, they can do that, if they can come and invest in the biggest uh, country in West Africa with that and do that. Hello? Hello? Oh God, we have problem with the network now. I think it's a network over there. Uh, because my network is perfectly okay. Diko, can you hear me? Hello, Diko. Ah. Uh, well, it, it was really, you know, breaking it down and I kind of like understand the dilemma that he finds himself and um, situation where he's... Okay. Hello? Okay, I can hear you now. Okay. He's back. I can hear you. I have. Yeah, I can hear you. So, you see, as I was saying, at that time, uh, the simple match, Ghana and Nigeria beat the UEFA Cup final. The UEFA Cup final was 65 million households. This one was over 100 million households across the world. So, imagine the opportunity that we, that we have to be able to do something brilliant. So, they were so excited to do it. We have all the documents, the pictures, and everything of all these meetings in Nigeria and everything, the videos in the NTA when they come. And I was even, I'm still, I'm, I'm still shocked that we are able to do that kind of uh, meetings in Nigeria and the link to the media. We build those kind of delegation. There are about, there were about five, six uh, people that came from Fox all over the world to Nigeria to do those meetings. And we keep it, we keep it because we respected our own NDA. So which means, if if we want to do things right, we do it right. When we went to NTA, NTA covered the meeting with their with their cameras, but they know that's NDA. They didn't show it anywhere. AIT, Calistos covered the meeting with his camera. They know that's NDA. They didn't show it anywhere. They keep it the way it is. You know the records there. So, but that one now that went uh, went here where, and so we have to go back to Ground Zero and start again. So along the way now, we now we now started having the conversation with the next TV that you are talking about, and we said, okay, let's let's do the same thing. And Next TV have just been giving the uh, giving the partnership with the uh, Nigerian satellite, uh, whatever. Yes, yeah, Nigerian right. satellite, uh, uh, satellite, and see how to optimize it. Build their domestic TV, build their cable TV, build their OTT, and everything. So we found that look, this is a new group that is coming on board. Now we can also we have the same ambition. We, they, are, they are trying to do something unusual for a group to come together and take over the Nagom side from the government and see how they can work with it. And we can work together with them. So they were also trying to build their own. We had to build their own. So we actually adopted basically the same framework of what we tried to do with uh, Fox. With Next. I mean, with Fox TV to say, okay, let's adopt it. Let's make it our Nigerian project. Because Next, uh, Fox came from America. We have to sign all kinds of American agreement and everything. And they have specific guidelines that they cannot be able to do. But if we do it in Nigerian way, we are all Nigerian. Uh, Nigerians are the one leading, leading next. We are the one leading uh, NPFL. Maybe we are the only ones that can solve our problem. Yes, we are. Uh, absolutely. It's not maybe. <laughs> because the truth is, Nigerians are the ones that will solve Nigerian problem. That is, That's the truth. That is, that, is, that, is, that is true. Because even if tomorrow they are following Nigeria, next will not go anywhere. They must continue to do They'll be business. here. <laughs> they can't go anywhere. So, so we, say we have the same fit. Let's, uh, let's come together. So we did that. So the so the, the the arrangement we had was that um, the business structure is going to lay on four on four pillars. Four pillars is for the complete commercialization and optimization of the commercial rights associated with the NPFL, both uh, both media and uh, normal commercial rights. But the first the first of the the first of the uh, of the transaction is that. Is that uh, next are going to make some investment in the league as commitment money to, to allow the league to keep running as a business while they are doing the other business. The second, the second um, leg of it is that we want to work together with next and build a domesticated and local production capacity, bring equipment from abroad, work with the local talent everywhere in Nigeria so we can build a proper production capacity that will serve both the MPFL and also the entertainment industry. Uh, but it will drive it will drive on the MPFL. And it will basically be driven by, by Nigeria. Like the La Liga model. That's the investment. 
Yeah, yeah, Mori, that's the investment they want to do. The third, the third investment is to agree on to also, okay, if now we produce the content, why do you take it? We must distribute it. So sure. let's agree, let's have a proper, let's have a proper uh, structure of distributing the content across all platforms. Next, next said, okay, on their own, uh, on their own uh, strategy, they are coming up with their own OTT first. That's why they are going first before they go to the normal decoders and everything. So they will take the ride for the OTT and put the games on the OTT and everything, and which will now go global. All our brothers across the world can buy the you know, and watch it. And they, Absolutely. The revenue forecast, the revenue forecast is huge. Then the second, the second platform is the mobile platform. We can offer this. We can offer these uh, games to the super sport. I mean, I mean <clears throat> the cable, the cable option. We can offer this to the super sports, to the uh, star times and everything. The third platform is to offer it to the free to air also. Some games will be on NTA and AIT. We we'll give them the game. So we will use all platforms to market the games and see what we could do it based on the business plan. We could do it. <clears throat> and then the third, that platform we can also build our own MPFL channel, MPFL TV. I can build an MPFL TV. I can put it on. A, I can even go and put it on Super Sport MPFL TV, and we agree something. The more subscribers that subscribe to my MPFL TV, I get revenue from it. Each day you want to watch uh, French uh, channels on Super Sport, you pay additional money. Yeah. If tomorrow you you want to watch uh, Indian channels, all these more Indian channels, you pay more money. There are some Asian channels you have to pay more money on top of it. So why not? Yeah. We can also build our own. Uh, we can also build our own MPFL TV and go and put it. Uh, on the on uh, on the sports sport decoders and uh, and the data decoders, and then people who subscribe with additional two hundred naira a month also whatever to watch the game. So we could that's only platform we could do. Even the NTA uh, DSO they are trying to do the digital switch over to come with decoder. You can have some pay per view channels there also. So you can also put the MPFL TV there or even the free to air channels. Why why you can pay additional hundred naira two hundred naira to watch the MPFL games and stuff. That's a long time. Or we can even we can even run that on the um, on the advertising revenue, and then that will come. So that's the platform. And then the the number four, the number four strategy is to see how we can now optimize all these revenues and commercialize it, and make sure we have a lot of revenues on the table. That will now pay off the cost of production. That will be paying because in the Liga model, every money that comes to the Liga goes to one part. The first line charge is to deduct the cost of production. Whatever is left is the money that goes to the everybody. Yeah. The Premier League is the, is the same thing. Every every revenue goes to one pot. It's from there now they will now remove the cost of uh, production uh, from ING and then whatever they sell they share. Yes. So, and then the moment you can the moment you can distribute this money across uh, this content across all platforms, you can be able to make enough resources that you can be able to pay for your production and also have enough money to do that. For example. Part of the business plan we had, when people are saying, ah, they say they want to raise $200 million over five years. No, it's not just on TV. It's the global revenues we are forecasting to, we are forecasting to generate through the system. For yeah. example, if you sell, if you sell, to, if you sell through OTT, we sign an, we sign an agreement with, a, uh, with a Nine Mobile. They were ready to host the OTT on the Nine Mobile uh, app on, on numbers, yeah. data. And they, are, they are willing to offer data to anybody that can buy an M mobile for specialized uh, data framework. You can you can have the OTT on you free of charge. You can watch food without without using your data. That's kind of that's kind of engineering we do, and then they will pay some money per subscriber for that. So we raise a huge amount of money from that alone. When we go to the uh, OTT that will go international, I know if you can do this game properly, good production. At least you can get between 200 to 500 thousand subscribers across the world. Absolutely. That are Nigerians. Yeah. That that even that even for the sake of patriotism, let me watch my Rangers International. Let me watch my 3SC. Let me watch my uh, Yimba. Let me watch my Kano Pillars. Kano Pillars, Pillars yeah. United. People will subscribe to pay a minimum of uh, of uh, say two, uh, three dollars, four dollars a month, five dollars a month. That is uh, to have your matches in Nigeria, while you can see your people and be happy abroad. People will subscribe to that, and imagine how much money you can make from that. So these are all the business plan that was built to do that, and we agree that okay, after we do that, once we have TV like that going on across, across the world, to sign sponsors will not be may be difficult because the, the sponsorship drives on TV. So we agree that we will sign we will sign about 
you know, we have cancelled uh, title sponsorship since uh, 2015. So we are going for elite sponsorship. So we signed like about eight elite sponsors. If you, if you agree to sign them, uh, maybe $2 million, uh, $3 million each, eight people here. As your elite sponsor, you have already raised about $24 million. $24 million. That can pay for your, pro <laughs> that can pay for your production. That can, that can pay for your production. And then whatever you get from TV goes back to the clubs. And to do that, and then and then the sponsor will get their value, and and the and the, uh, and the clubs will get their value, the TV will get their value, the fans will get their value. It's all part of the business. We sign, we look at the betting people, we look at the mobile people, we look at everything that we we'll do to do that. The studio, it's the entire revenue that we are expecting over gradually over five years that will total this amount of money. And okay, that's where the two hundred five million dollars came from. Yeah, 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 and, yeah, yeah. And in fact, that was the minimum benchmark. If I can sign eight sponsors to give me to give me uh, three million dollars a year at LGL sponsor, that's that's twenty four million by five by five. We're almost there. Not even TV, not even TV. The people don't know this business plan and the way it is going. But all this thing can work only with the production in place and the TV and, and everything is there. So that is the that's this is the A to Z of what we are trying to do with the next TV. And where are we at the moment? Already, TV have started making the investment in the league. They made uh, they made the first deposit to guarantee that they are serious. That money, that money come in. Uh, they were supposed to even pay the the second tranche uh, just the week before this. Uh, the league was uh, the league was uh, suspended. So I'm sure when the league comes back, we continue with that. And that is one. So they are making commitment on that. And they have already built their OTT platform. I don't know whether you have seen it. They have. If you go to Play Store now. You see, you see, you see yeah. there. You yeah. see the clubs, you see the you see the you see the idea, you see what they're trying to do. Yes, I have, already, I have seen that. I have seen that. We have already we have already collected all the data of the players in the league. All the data of the players in the league have been collected by the next TV by the clubs. All the players registered for the season with their age, with their with their pictures, with their club jerseys, because all those pictures are going to go to the app. And when you are showing the matches, it is the same pictures they will use to do all they are doing, this 3D and everything, blah blah blah. That will come, that has been done. And then uh, already they are building, uh, trying to bring in uh, people from abroad and some people locally here. They have spoken to so many people locally here who are very good in production, who are coming to join to work with them. Very local people, so many of them to join with them because they, their investors are abroad and they will come to support what we are doing, then to see how we can start production. Yes, we must start with about three games, two games, three games, but the focus is we must do all our 10 games live or delayed or whatever all covered properly to do everything. And then that's why we can make enough money to do that. Some will go to Super Sports, some can go to Star Times, some can go to uh, AIT, NTA, and then, but everything will be on the on the OTT as well. That will go global. And then when we have our NPFL TV, we'll have our NPFL TV that runs 24 hours. Apart from football, every day that we magazine programs, issues like that, we see, we see what the Premier League are doing to do that. So. That has that has been done, but it's not easy to do that. But what uh, what makes us happy is the fact that even the first money that they deposited uh, to the league came from abroad, not from Nigerian bank. So it means clearly that an investor outside there who's willing to invest put his money in Nigeria, put his money in Nigeria to do that to do that. But that cannot happen. That cannot happen overnight. But if you don't do that. If you don't do this, we are just wasting our time. People shout, oh, super sport, super sport. Yes. When we have super sport, how many games are we showing that a week? One. In the whole season of 380 games, at the maximum, every season we show maximum about 60, 70 games. It's some, it's some weeks that we show two games. Is that the way they show the other league? No. So every week, every week we have eight games that are going, that are, that are going, uh, that are just wasting away. Is that the way to do it? If you don't go back to the basics, without the production, without the production, you can't do anything. And I'm telling you, imagine you cannot set up a proper production company now, no matter how limited it is, that can serve us without a budget of 30, 50 million dollars. You know that, you're a medium, you know that. Absolutely. And sometimes when I tell people this, they're like, hey, that's what are you saying? I say, well, you know, the thing is, a lot of people think it's just to put two cameras together and then when it comes to football, like, We've done, for instance, the FA Cup covering, Lagos State FA Cup covering for the last two years. And I'll tell you what, I also was thinking like that. When we started, I started looking at the investment. Recently, we procured a large expansion of equipment, and I was sitting in my office one day, and I said, you know what? I can actually broadcast the Nigerian League now. But even at that, 
you know, a lot of things needs to be in place. There is, it is one thing to be patriotic. It is another thing to see mm -hmm. that the business environment favors your business because patriotism does not, does not put food on your table. So having said that. <laughs> That's just it. So yeah. people don't understand what we are doing. There's nowhere we have not gone as MPFL, as NFF, trying to see we found this investment fund. I tell you, I made a presentation to the Sovereign Wealth Fund. Even, even last week, I was chatting with the MD of the, of the Sovereign Wealth Fund of Nigeria, which is which OG, and telling him that, look, look at the Saudi Arabian people now. They are taking their money from, uh, from the Sovereign Wealth Fund to go and buy a new castle. To go and buy a new castle, okay, 300 him, million. And they are willing, they're willing to invest another 500 million in the squad to make them bigger than every other team in the league. What, I, what, I, what, I, what I'm telling you here is, no, we don't need money into the league. Invest this money into the value chain where it will drive the league and the entertainment industry and to blossom. Without, without doing that, we are just wasting our time. So okay. like you say, okay, we'll look at it, we'll see what to do, blah, blah, blah. I went and, yeah, when I sit down with the, with the Syrian governor to do the same thing, he's ready to do it. We have when I sit down, we have myself, uh, Amadou Pini, Induka Erabo, I've had the opportunity to go and make a presentation to the whole uh, Nigeria economic management team to make a presentation on that, on that the vice president of Sibanjo. So look, this is the kind of intervention the government would do to create the industry we are all, we are all looking for. So we don't need money to go and give clubs or to give the league or to give the NFL, no. Invest in this kind of value chain. That would just not, not just create jobs for the people, but look at the value it will create across the world. The Premier League didn't start like that. Somebody bought that 200 million pounds to invest in this kind of, uh, in this kind of, invest in the media and invest in the infrastructure in the stadium. That is what bought at the Premier League in 1992. Yes, and I spoke, I spoke, I spoke uh, three days ago, uh, three days ago, uh, Martin Tyler, you know him, the, the, the yeah. voice of football, was on my show. And in the mm -hmm. conversation, one of the major points that we discussed was how the Premier League started. And one of the things he also raised was the fact that the English League, because I remember I was in the UK in 1987 and also 1990, then I, I reminded him of how bad it was to go to the stadium. And he said that, that, was, the, dying. Yes, that was the point when oliganism came into the game and the stadiums were not good. So if this type of money, could it be that government, the sovereign uh, national, the first sovereign wealth fund, as you say, the CBN, or probably the, even the the uh, Bank of Industries, they are looking at Nigerian League and saying, you know what, the stadiums are not even football friendly. The, I spoke with uh, China Achiru a couple of days ago and he said he loves Nigerian League, he's been in the league all his life, but he can't take his children to the stadium because nobody can go and sit under the sun for four hours and come back home with time for it. I've been, I've, been saying, I've been saying the same thing. Nobody will go to the stadium and sit down with the rain and between him. All these monies we are looking for, some of the monies will go into the, into the uh, building the infrastructure and then the other money uh, for, the, for the media infrastructure, the other monies will go into supporting the stadium to upgrade. It doesn't cost a lot of money to roof the stadium, create uh, profile lounges, create profile dress rooms, and that is it, and, it, and the pitches. We already, we already have, the, have the infrastructure. Across, across the board, it doesn't take anything to roof it through the stadium to create a proper dress room, proper channels, proper uh, utilities and everything. Like that. It's all part of the money we are looking for. And for example, now, if now, uh, if now I have this money and I go to a uh, second state government and say, okay, I have this money, I will do this job for your stadium, but you pay me back over 15 years. You'll be paying the money back so I can give the money back to the very well for the or to CBI. What's the meaning? What's that? But, 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 the, but the, the upgrade will be done under the specification of what we want. Because we know what the football needs at this age, at this, age, at this era. If you go to Bauchi Stadium, for example, now, and you do the same thing, we discover the government uh, that owns the stadium, maybe the federal government or whoever owns the stadium. This is it, but we pay this over whatever, whatever. Because the moment you do that, that stadium will be turned into multi-purpose stadium. Because in doing, in doing the upgrade, in doing the upgrade, you're not just doing the upgrade to play football. You should do, you should do an football, upgrade football where is, there will be shops. Football is 1% of what a stadium does. So there's a whole where lot. Where there will be shops, where maybe there will be conference rooms, where maybe there will be, uh, there will be even cinema, if they, if they, if they visit a yeah, restaurant cinema, and everything. So that, far, so that you, can be making, you can be making money 24 hours. Around the clock. 24 seven, yeah. Okay, so now we've done. Do uh, 
now we're done with the now we're done with the and I, I want to thank you for explaining this bit. I, I mean, I practically do not understand all of this part, so maybe I'll take some of the criticism back, but I'll still criticize you. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna pro promise you that I'm 100 percent not criticize you. I will, but at least I understand some part and thumbs up to you for that. What you've said, and these are not frame, these are not just cooked up stories, these are stories that are verifiable. So that's one. But then there is also the distrust. Now, when I say distrust, knowing that, oh, I want to support 3SC, but then 3SC is the government club. So they can decide to change the chairman anytime they like. They can decide to change the coach anytime they like. This will just go the way they like, and I do not have a say so in it. But then, fans, look at Newcastle United, for instance. Newcastle was owned by Mike Ashley. It's his club. But then there is the supporters' trust who have powers to say, we don't even yeah. want you on the club. We want you out of our club. Now, they push that for the, the club. Yeah, they push that for the past six years and now Sports Direct and Mike Ashley is gone. So what's saying the same thing? I remember Sports uh, Sandlanders came in. Okay, that was when Kulika Rabo was the chairman of the LMC, but I, I'm, I'm sure you were part of the conversation. Sandlanders came in and tried to discuss fan ownership. And in the club licensing, fan ownership was part of a major key point of the licensing. But then all of a sudden, it just went out of the discussion. So some fans are feeling like, well, you know what? It's not my club. Yeah, my, I don't have a seat. And everything went off. What can we do to resurrect that fan ownership again? And most of the time, what I hear people say, eh, the fans will not come, the fans will not come. But then, Enugu Rangers no, 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 played, no, no. played 19 games and the stadium was always filled up. Cano Pillars, I, I left well, Lagos. I've gone to Cano Pillars a couple of times to watch that game just to experience the atmosphere. The stadium is full. They keep saying Berumbaka. I don't know what it means, but I just enjoyed it. No, so, so. Oh, Lord. No, okay, I can hear you now. I don't know what it meant, but I enjoyed it. I guess so, yeah. Oh, it's breaking. When it matters most, why is this? Can you hear me now? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Okay. Okay, okay. but I need back kind of football. That's why, because only kind of players used to play that kind of football. They don't, they don't, they don't kick the ball. They don't kick the ball. Kick and follow. Okay. But that's why I need back. I need back. Give me, I give you. Oh, okay. Because every time I go to Kano, I keep hearing that word. Kano Mbaka. But yeah. I was like, what are these people yeah. saying? But I enjoyed it. I, I mean, I like going to stadium. I've been to play too. And the same thing. Uh, in the heat of bombing in, 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 in Borno, I went to Medellin. That's the kind of, that's the kind of, that's the kind of, that's the kind of football Kano uh, people love. Uh, passing football on the, on the, on the floor. Kano Mbaka on the ground. They don't like to see what's the kitchen ball or follow. Nobody watch you in Kano. They want to do three passes, four passes, they will shout. My name back up because they're happy to see people oh, kicking the ball on okay, now, now the I, ground. You know? Now I understand. So As a matter of fact, yeah. at that time I was traveling because I was really believing that, okay, this uh, fan ownership thing will work. I was trying, there's this content we did for ourselves that we call mm -hmm. around the MPFL. I know that we do not have the, 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 the finances to buy the broadcast right of the game. So I wanted to build something around sharing fans' experience across Nigeria. But you know how big Nigeria is? By the time you pay flight ticket from Lagos to Kano, Lagos to Borno, or Enugu or Potakot, you practically have exhausted the profits, the money you want to make for the next 10 years. And you're not making profit yet. So we, we had to cool off for that. But what is the plan? Is, is, do you need a law from the National oh, Assembly? Wait, wait. No, 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 no. We don't mean we don't need a law for the National Assembly. In fact, uh, in fact, uh, when uh, when they were doing the NFF uh, deal, and the Senate President, you know, he's uh, at that time, uh, he, you know, yeah. he, he also won a football club, so everything. So he was pushing, he was pushing for, he was pushing for uh, let them put a let them put a clause in the, the club licensing requirement. In the, in the bill, 
that uh, government should not own more than 20% of any cloth. But, uh, but um, many people felt otherwise, including myself. Now you can't, you can't legislate those things because those things could change o- o- over time. Let the club licensing legislate it. Every government can own a club if they want to own a club, so long they could, they could uh, comply and work within the, the framework of framework. the club licensing. Uh, yeah, they do, they do it. They can own a club. So we can't legislate and say they can't do it because there will be a time that will come where you need the government to intervene and they say, okay, well, I can only own 20% of this. Everything will die. So we leave it at that because in Africa, Everything you do in Africa, even the business we do, it also revolves around the government spending and what government are doing and, and, uh, and stuff like that. So we do that. But that did not die. We, we actually even take it to the next level because, you know, people always forget what you do. In 20, uh, I think 2016 or thereabout, we signed an MOU with, uh, we signed an MOU with the NSAD uh, over the counter for exchange. It's all over, even in the media, we signed the MOU. I want, I, want, I want to the MOU. The MOU was that we are going to work with them so they can provide a credible platform. They can provide a, they can provide, okay. They can provide the credible platform where where these clubs can be, can be, transaction can happen, where the private sector can come and buy the club or the, or the fans or whatever it is to do that. Because we need something credible to be able to do that. And, yeah. and we signed the MOU. We advertise for financial advisors. We advertise for legal advisors. We advise for some brokers, and, and and I can tell you, we were shocked. All the big, all the big, big guns involved in a, uh, in the stock market and the advertising. Uh, I mean, um, advisory businesses in the in the stock market. The lawyers they applied. Everybody believes it's a new. It's a new. Uh, it's a new uh, venture we are going to open, industry that we are going to open, that we even need to be there. So yeah, they all applied, and we do that. And so we are there. And then, what is the first step to do that? The first step to do is now to get the consent of the governor who owns this club. We now selected eight clubs as a pilot club, and I'm sure economy pillars were involved, Imba were there, Rangers were there, KMC were there, uh, Rangers were there, and some other clubs, I think they were all there as a pilot club. And then later, if any Uber and, uh, and uh, IBA Warriors joined to, joined to make it 10. So we have 10 clubs that I say, okay, let's, let's take them as a pilot club. What is the first step? Is to go and get the consent of the governors that owns this club. That we are ready, the state government that owns the club, that we are ready to, we are ready to seed at least maybe 70% or 80% of the, of the, of the stake in this, in this club. Then we can move forward. And I can tell you, surprisingly, we got all those consents wow. signed by the governors. We have them signed by the governors. Most of them signed by the governors from Kano to Abati. Everybody, they are all willing. All the governors signed the consent to say we are ready to if you can get the investor to do that. So the first hurdle basically has been crossed because we now have an uh, understanding that we are all on the same page. The state are ready to do it. That was the club. We are ready to push it as because we can, we can, we can set the platform. And the stock market is there. But where are the private sector? Because the private sector can only come and invest, even the funds can only come and invest where they can see the bottom line. Yeah. Because if you cannot see the bottom line and see that, okay, no, you, if, the people that are, if, the, if the people that are going to invest 200 million pounds now in Newcastle and put in under 200 million pounds, they cannot see the balance sheet of the Premier League, they cannot see the balance sheet of the club that is. That this is the fan base, this is what we can earn over the next 15, 20 years, blah, 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 blah. They don't do it. When, when Ibrahim Obi did his own, everybody thinks he was a madman. Over 10 years, Chelsea turned from negative to positive. Apart from the goodwill it against Ibrahim Obi, Chelsea are now declaring profit, even though the profit is not big, but it's uh, declaring profit. Yeah. Like declaring uh, operating profit and whatnot. So we, we are now at that stage saying, okay, we are there now. The only way we, this will work now. Let's let's halt a little bit on this process. Let's continue to create the revenue ben, the benchmark and the revenue base for the league. The way we are trying to do with Next TV and everybody, the one we're trying to do with Fox and everybody. So long, once we do that now, the fans and the investors will see the bottom line, and you can see you can see how people will come scrambling to get involved with involved with this. So the issue is that we have to be patient. This is this is this is not magic. It doesn't happen overnight. I have the governor's consent. I have the stock exchange. I have the advisors that are already in place. The big advisors that can advise you properly to sell this club. And then we are going to look at uh, look at some clubs to see, okay, this club, 
put in the model that's for this club. It can't be one size fit all. Cano Pillow can work very good as a fans club. Yeah. 3SV can work very good as a fans club. Rangers yeah, can work very good as a fans club. Mm-hmm. Yimba, they have the fan base that can work yeah. as a fan club, as a fan club. Some other clubs we need institutional investors. Aqua can so invest in the club. I talk about, no, do that. Nobody will buy them. They need to do that, to do that, do what they want to do. You get the money like that, you know. A plateau maybe can get as a fans club. Yeah, plateau can. Are fans. At least. Uh, we can, because you cannot, you cannot tell me now if you in Germany, for example, the rule is very clear. It's fifty plus one. Fifty plus one. Every club is owned is owned fifty one percent by the fans. While either the state government or the local government or the investors are on on the other forty forty uh, percent. Uh, uh, like uh, who put nine percent, some on twenty percent, ten percent, and stuff like that. But the fans own sixty one percent of every club in Germany. But so in Nigeria, we have to look at how we can take this model. We have them already. We are trying to. The only thing that is delaying us is we have to put the bottom line where people can see, oh, there is revenue here. If I come in here, I can monetize it. I can get the revenue and I can get the TV popularity I need and everything. And everybody will come. Kano Pillars can easily register uh, two hundred thousand people. In Kano, that will be Kano Pillars. Uh, that will on Kano Pillar. If everybody pay twenty thousand a year as a subscription fee, it's almost half. A, it's almost uh, half a billion, one billion. It's right, a billion. billion. Yeah, one billion. Uh, do that. How much? How much is their budget today? <laughs> their budget today will not be more than twenty fifty. Hello. Hello. Uh, sometimes when you when you're depending on technology, this just happens, you know. Well, I mean, what we're discussing something that. Hello. Okay, can you you can you, you're there? Okay, I think I think it times out. It times out after one hour, and then I can I can see you. I can hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me? I can see. I can see you too. So you know, the clock. So we the clock. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Can you hear me, can you hear me now? All right. Yeah. Go ahead. You can hear. Yeah. I said government can own the twenty percent uh, gold share in the club and own the stadium and then to protect the club so that nobody will go and buy the club and, uh, and uh, mess it up. But at least the management and the organization and administration is done by the private sector. For example, now the. All the oil companies in Nigeria that are operating the oil wells, they are owned uh, 51 percent, 49 percent by the government. Government government owns only 49 percent of it, while the while the private sector Shell and Co owns uh, all this joint venture owns uh, 51 percent. Are they running? Are they running property properly? LNG the same thing, everything the same thing. So we can do the same thing with the government. Yeah, government can own the, the, because they have the stadium and they have the stability. They can own 20 percent, 30 percent, while the private sector can own the controlling share. That will allow them to manage the club and operate it properly and follow the distance. So that's where we are. And the reason why you can see now, I can tell you, every club manager in Nigeria knows what to do. They are passionate about it. They too want to get it to this level. Yeah. But the issue, the issue, but the issue is that we have to decide which are come first. It's a matter of chicken and egg. Will you go and be and be enforcing the club licensing and binding people, chasing clubs out? Without creating the revenue platform where everybody will say, "Okay, this league is worth." What no, I think I think you need. It's clear you need the revenue platform first. So let's put it this way: that that uh, hopefully, hopefully everything everything is stable now. You guys will have a good transition. Everything will be fine. Let's just me. I'm I'm I'm, I'm an incurable optimist. I mean, I don't have another country. Mm-hmm. I have Nigeria. So. Let's say this next TV deal, everything goes well. We beat Corona and then we're back and running. So in the next two or three years, this thing goes well. There's still one caveat with clubs. I want to invest in a club. But so far, no club have been able to, even the private run club like MFM, uh, FIUBA, and before they give me the excuse of it is private run by an individual. Roman Abramovich owned Chelsea. But they declare their profits. We see this is what... So if these clubs are not coming out to say, look, oh, for this year, year ending July 31st, this is how much we have spent. Yes, we did not make money. We have lost this amount of money. 
In Nigeria, for instance, we don't know how much players are sold. Every player that transferred from one club to the other is undisclosed. Why am I interested in buying that club when everything is undisclosed? How do I know that the whole money did not go to the, the pocket of Bayasi or the, the pocket of uh, yeah. the is, uh, Isaac, you know, or Bobasi? When you don't make this public, you give me room for suspicion that, are these people serious? Because 75% of what the media discuss in European football is the transfer fee. Yeah, yes, uh, yeah, what's course. it called? Nick, Nick, Nicholas Pepe, for instance, has not played any football that anybody would discuss. But every time you mention his name, it was transferred for 72 million pounds. That's the conversation. Okay, okay, okay. So, okay. if all the transfer in Nigeria is tied to undisclosed, 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 I'm a media person. So, I'm going to be talking every day. The undisclosed fee of the uh, Alimi, Shakira Alimi, the undisclosed fee of Abu Aziz, the undisclosed fee of this. It doesn't make sense to the guy who's listening abroad because he's thinking, when I watch the NBA, I know how much LeBron James earned. When I watch the EPL, I know how much this one earned, up to what they get per week. Can we sort of like encourage the clubs? Not, this, not everything will enforce law. Encourage them to make it public. We're not going to go rob them. Well, Nobody's going to come kidnap them. Well, well you see, I can, um, I can tell you uh, it's under our leadership, under our, under our watch. Nigeria were the first country in Africa to sign up to the FIFA uh, DTMS. We are the first to do it. MPFL is the first league in Africa to start using the FIFA DTMS. The people will not see it, will not see it that way. And that DTMS is to allow this kind of transparency. Because for now, no transfer in Nigeria is done uh, manually. Everything is done, uh, is done, uh, is done uh, electronically. Everything yeah, is done online and, and, and or digital. And all these issues you are thinking about must be, must be disclosed. They are, they are, they are disclosed. The, the, it's all there. I said, okay, in the clubs, we declaring this uh, ourselves. Maybe after the transfer window, we as the regulators will be will be pulling out this data from uh, from uh, from uh, yes. the, the TMS and and put it out for the people to see. You know, because even yes. these people are now encouraging are encouraging uh, transparency on this, are encouraging to make uh, uh, because because even in Europe now. All this piece of transfer, you know, it's always speculation. There is no any document that shows you PP was born for 75 million anywhere <laughs> outside. There's no any proof. Maybe they speculate. They speculate these, at times the figures are not up to that figure. But they hype the figures no, but, like that. But you know what is good about it? They're good to do that. What is good about that. it is, uh, I always say to people, I move, I transition from radio to TV. Uh, even though I've had experience as uh, things with Al Jazeera and HITV, but the bulk of my time, 13 years, was on radio before now. Now, there's some, something we always see. You can wear your bossa shirt and your singlet and go to a radio station and talk for five hours and go home. People will be excited. But if you want to do TV, it is 75% good. 75% aesthetics. I, knew, I wanted to do this interview today. I had another interview with a coach uh, in Australia in the morning. I had a bad, my teeth got broken yesterday. Because I want to do this interview, and oh, I'm already okay, okay. anticipating that, oh, this is going to be affecting Nigeria. So a lot of Nigerians will view it. I don't want them to have a broken teeth. I had to go to the dentist and make a temporary fix on my teeth. Mm -hmm. This is by Thursday. By Thursday, I'll put the crown in. But this is just a temporary because I want to do this interview. I don't want to call you and say, oh, let's shift it. It will look like I'm not serious. So having said that, 75% of what goes on TV is aesthetics. Mm -hmm. Then 25% is the real world. So, if the league wants everybody to be buzzing about it, we must focus on that aesthetics. More like, give the people what mm -hmm. they want. So, what if we're not talking the football, we should be talking about, oh, the brand of Jesse that this club is signing. We should be talking about... Ah, you we have a brand to be like that. Yeah. Did you see the color of boots uh, this guy wore that, you know, he was wearing one leg red, one leg blue? Uh, you know, some of these things. What are the players eating? The, the, moment, the, moment, the moment we have TV, and we have all the games live on TV, and we have the magazine program, all this will change because the stadiums have to be perfect. The way the people are has to be perfect. The reason why now we look the other way a little bit is because we don't have the rules, but we don't want to do that because we know 
you know, we are trying to come up to get the things, the things, uh, the things done, done right. To do that. Let me tell you the last meeting I had with the club. Uh, one of our meetings, when we after we turned the next TV, the club said, "Look, guys, let's tell the truth here. Once the next TV starts, even before we repair the stadiums, any stadium that is not TV friendly will not host any match. Mm. We we sign up, we sign up ourselves." If we are going to be playing all these matches within three stadiums until we repair all our stadiums, we have agreed to do it. Because government doesn't have the money to keep giving us now, so we have to create this money. And if through this system we are going to create this money, then we have to, we have to, we have to sacrifice. That is why I'm telling you, I tell you, everybody knows the right thing to do. I know what they, what they want to do. If they play cup competition, is that how they behave? No, they behave that way. So, just a matter, we are just uh, trying to, because uh, part of my own, uh, my own thinking is that uh, persuasive reform is more effective than forceful reform. Yeah. You force people, you force people, they started bolting up and you cannot achieve anything. Fighting, you cannot achieve anything. But when you try to talk to them the right way to do that and everything will be fine, will be fine. And I tell you, every club chairman in Nigeria understands this. The issue is that they just want to see the bottom line. If I have money now in my kitty, that I will share a 200 million, 100 million to each club every year to start the league. I'll keep the rules. You cannot, you, cannot, you cannot take that money without behaving because that money comes because of that thing you are doing. Conditions. So they, so they know, yeah, so they say they know it. And I'm telling you, we have one of the best, one of the best uh, rules and regulations across the world. We are not sitting, for example, now me, I'm not sitting up on the CAF Interclub Competition and Club Life uh, Committee for nothing. Because they have seen, they have seen the vision of what we are trying to do. They have seen the kind of documents we have because that is a starting point. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not sitting in the FIFA stakeholders committee as a member for nothing. I'm not sitting in the 10-man 10 10 man expert uh, committee for FIFA and IFA uh, for nothing. 10 people, FIFA selected 10, 10 people across the world. I was the only one that was put in to represent all the leagues in the world in that committee. IFA or FIFA. I said, Iwanda is there, Colina is there. Uh, all these people are there. I'm, 10 people are part of the committee. I go to Zurich for meetings and all these committees. So I'm not representing the entire league in the world. You think they will come and just do that because they like my face? No, because they see that, look, this is Nigerian people. Look at the kind of documents they have. Look at the kind of projects they have. Look at the plans they have. It's just maybe they have something to contribute. And when we, when we do meetings, when we speak, when we say things, they understand, we know what we're talking about. So, but the issue is that I'm telling you is we need to bridge this financial gap. Once we do that, everybody will fall in line. It is the clubs themselves. They'll be running health and health to make sure everything is okay because they know, because they want to earn the money. And you can even tell the money that until I give you what we what we are those days what we are saying. Uh, if you play an under 15 uh, under 17 player for 15 minutes, let's just say under, under 15 player. Yeah. Every club is trying if to find him to play and put him there. If you have five thousand fans <laughs> in the stadium. You get to you pay, you pay your money for that. You pay, you pay your money for that. We created all that system in the system. So once the money comes in, look at now what is happening with the European League now. Just two months of uh, TV revenue is out. Look at how everything has better. Yeah. Everything is trying to go. But we we have we have not survived for two seasons without the TV revenues of the CKK. We are still pursuing another another revenue. It means we are it means we are not that bad. There's something we are doing, we are doing a bit right, no matter what. Look at clubs now. I give him Roma yesterday. We're just uh, taking our uh, four months salary from player three. Players are donating their four months salary for the that. All the <laughs> leagues are now suffering, arguing to do that. So, you know, because everything is built on this cash flow. If the cash does come in, that come in and everybody has to work, who does okay. that? 20 okay. years ago, when we were watching the Premier League, they have mud, they have mud, they have mud on their pitches. They have yeah. budget shares, you know, electronic board. But as they are making money from the TV, they are Everybody investing is. the money into the, into the system. They are, they are investing the money into the system. So we have to decide which one to follow. For the past, for the past two years, the only thing we have been working on 24-7 is sort this TV out, bring this investment money, and then, and then we can ride on the other, on the other, on the other thing. But, the, but no matter what, we must still a football running one way, one way or the other. And, and you can see, you can see the, our biggest consistency are the clubs. Because we keep them, we keep them abreast of what we are doing. They know what we are doing. When we come from meeting, they what we are doing. They are all supporting because they know. But uh, is that our fault now? Fox leaves Nigeria. It's not our fault. 
For example, right. what are you right. doing? You know, right. our the NTA couldn't right. do that. Nico, no, it's it's been an interesting and revealing chat with you. But as as I let you go, because the injections that I took are really wearing out right now, I'm beginning to look a bit dizzy and disoriented. <laughs> uh, I, this is the time where I will take my leave so that I don't look terrible on, on screen. But if I let you go, uh, what would you see in the league? At what point will you look at the league and say, I am satisfied? The, even, even if there is room for progress, you look at the league and you say, you know what? You beat your chest and say, I, Diku, Shehu Diku, I am satisfied with what myself and the entire board and even the club administrators have achieved. What is that thing that you will say? You see, you see I'm, a, I'm a very stubborn person in anything I believe in. All of us involved with this football, myself, Amadou, everybody, for example, we are all involved uh, by, by choice. You have, we have option to do, to do other things that you want to do but because we believe in the system. People, people don't seem to realize that as far back as 2004, I've been involved. I was the person who wrote the blueprint in 2004. That gave the final uh, drive for the independent league to be, to be set up in Nigeria. First, the first meeting of the uh, independent league in Nigeria in January 2005, I was the one that organized the meeting. I paid for the whole. I was the one that gave the first presentation to all the people that were on that board because I believe in that, in that, in that system. In 2002, I wrote an article that Mumina Alao seeded his own column for that article. At that time, there was no social, 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 social media. The head, the head of the article was Show and the Modico. Ask Mumina Alao, he will tell you, he'll give you a copy of that article. I was trying to depict what we can do to make Nigerian football better, try the league. That was 2002. So it's a passion. It's something we believe in. And therefore, I know exactly, we know exactly what we want to do. I was checking some of my pictures from years back. I saw, I saw my pictures with uh, Amadou, Salisu Abaka, uh, Mike uh, uh, Ibru, and everybody. We were in London, 2006. We are going from one school to the other, trying to learn how this is done and what we could do better to do that. So the first biggest deal in Nigeria that came in to, to football, to the league, 2006, I was, I was, I was behind it. I pushed it, I organized it. So we know clearly what we want to do. So I know exactly what we want to do, but where we are going. The only time we can be satisfied is the fact that when we reach to a place where we have beautiful infrastructures, we have our, our clubs beautifully organized, professionally run, and we have a lot of resources that are coming from the center to drive the development of the club. And, and even in Europe, if you look at Europe, for example, they only get about 30, 35% of their revenues from the center. Yeah. About 70, 70% from the revenues is the club that generate their revenues. It's not the league that feed, that feed everybody, that feed everybody to do that. So we want to make sure that we are at that level where anytime we discuss football in Nigeria, the number one item on the agenda is Nigeria Professional Football League, where we will chase out this dominance of foreign league, which we take it as a, another way of a, uh, slave trade is that they are doing for us, you know, uh, under colonial. Uh, uh, but on that uh, front, us, on that front, that. I want to, wait, Shea Udiko, Shea Udiko, I want to blame you on that front. You can't, uh, with yeah. one mouth, say that Amaju Pinik, your president, will openly tell the world that he's an Arsenal fan. You, I think you're a Manchester United fan. It, it, it can't work. It can't work. Uh, have you ever because, seen me? Have you ever seen me? Have you ever seen me discussing Manchester United? Already? Because Greg died. Let me, let me tell you. Let, let me tell you. Let me tell you. In those days. Let me give you an example. In those days, in those days, as we are developing as kids and everything, we have this passion. Yeah. I was the one that brought Manchester. I was the one that brought Manchester United and Portsmouth uh, to play in Abuja. I yeah. know how much money I raised at that time. I raised over a billion naira for the private sector to do that project. I know how much I know how much I paid the club to do that. But as time goes on, if I can tell you now, as I speak to you now, I don't care when they are playing European football. Even when I watch it, I don't. I don't, I don't concentrate because my passion. I realized that the only thing we need to do to develop our own domestic football. And, and you must understand what they are doing there because I've been there before. I've, I've, I've worked with them. I know everything about them. I know what they are doing. And I know what they are doing. I know what they are, how they are making their money. And I know how, how they are killing our football. Look, we have this document. I don't know whether you are ready before. I football have. means more. Football means more. Like you, you, our... you gave it to me in Kano, in that uh, yeah, Bristol yeah. hotel. Okay, so so in, this, in this document, there is an uh, analysis we made. Over $200 million every year leaves Nigeria to go and sponsor club abroad. 
Uh, yeah. From, from, the, from the TV, from the sponsorship, and put them million pounds for money we make in Nigeria. And then, and then our league, our players here, yeah, yeah so for it. No, we can't even get, million, can't get money, one million pounds. One, 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 one million pounds. And we say we are, we say we are developing. The same way the government have blocked the borders of our rights, about uh, any other importation, we have to also watch the amount of foreign football we watch. Go to Morocco, to, go to Morocco today and see how much foreign football they have. They don't have. They are focused on their league. So we have to, we have to, the only way I'll be satisfied in this job is when I'm able to talk to Nigerians where they can turn their mind and hearts and their pockets into our domestic game. Not just the, not, not just the NPFL, even the other sports. So that the other, the other foreign sports will only be our, only our luxury or whatever it is, our luxury. But we have to, we have to do work on this because we have all the money here. We have all the engine there. If you can take, Put a million pounds to sponsor uh, foreign football. What is that? What is the, what's the meaning of that? And it's not, it's not only a Nigerian problem, it's African problem. The same way we are taking our oil and go and give, uh, and go and export and go and sell uh, and import petroleum instead of for us to define the petroleum here. It's the same, the same problem we have here. The same way, we are, the same way our elites have been running around, going to abroad for the hospitals, and now we are here. We are all stuck here now. We have to go and look at our local hospitals. Look at the way we are running around trying to spend the money. So times have reached with, with even this coronavirus uh, issue. Every now realize we have to look inward because now even with your money you can't go abroad. Even with your everything you can't go abroad. You have to eat what you have here. So so we have to develop this uh, domestic game, and that is just the passion I have. Cap Champions League make about uh, maybe thirty million, forty million dollars a year. The entire Cap Champions League in Nigeria. Yeah, but UEFA. In the whole, the whole Africa, but UEFA, UEFA Champions League will come to Nigeria, will come to Africa, and take in about 200 million, 200 million uh, in TV rights, uh, and go and share to UEFA. And then we are here, we are saying our football is bad, our football is bad. When the money, when the money is here, if we invest that money here, do you know what 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 you could do? So even in my meetings in uh, FIFA and CAR and uh, World League Forum, I've been telling all the big league, all the big league guys, you have to agree a program where. If you come to my jurisdiction and you make money, you have to draw something back into that my jurisdiction so that a solidarity so that we can use it to develop our domestic game. Otherwise, you can't come and uh, and take my money here and then and then and then come and dominate my TV, my TV, uh, my TV airtime with your football. So my fans don't go to the stadium. Nobody goes anywhere. And then we say we can develop. What are we can where we are. I'm very, I'm okay. very sure on that front they will be willing to give a percentage. I'm not speaking for them, but this well, is well, go, well, I don't want to. Uh, no, because don't, between me and you, between me and I you, to, I don't want to tell you. I don't want to tell you, I don't want to tell you the, the response. Uh, no, no, I don't even want to know the response. But between me and you, this is a country where I sit here and I write a letter to ask. What is the NFF doing with the FIFA develop, Go Project money? I can't give account of it. I can't even... A journalist, for instance, a journalist, Matthew Hall, in the US, who writes for the New York mm -hmm. Times, sent me a mail because he see what I'm doing online. I was like, okay, this guy, I can trust him. Send me a mail and say, can you give me a breakdown of what you guys are doing in your country with the FIFA Go Project money and the women development money? He sent me that mail uh, 14th of January. It's because, it's because, it's because, it's because, it's because our people are only looking for the headlines, the bad headlines. Just two weeks ago, the NFL has put out an advert. The NFL has put out an, an, an advert in the newspapers asking for contractors and everybody to bid for some projects <coughs> that are going to be developed for the FIFA money. It's there, it's out there, but nobody even reported it. Nobody even, nobody, nobody even discussed it. Okay. But if it is the negative one, everybody will jump. No, everybody no, no, Dico, no, Dico. <coughs> I will not let you out of this one. The indictment is on you people. You know why? I'm as you. I'm not. I'm not going to be bothered about. He's my brother, but I'm going to say this the way. I'm as you. If he wants no, to tell lies, it's no, Dico, Dico. I don't. Know that. He doesn't tell lies. I'm telling See, you. No, 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 no. Dico, I can't. I can't take that. I can't take that. No, I'm as you do. You can't call him. You are a company man, no, no, and no. I respect you for that. You, you would always defend your team, but. I, I think I have the right to hold up. When Amaju wants to lie okay. to the public, Amaju know how to gather the, the, the press together and dish out lie that they will put out. So if Amaju is doing advertisement, the same Amaju that will gather uh, hundreds of fans, uh, journalists, and put them in a uh, 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 Boisla club, uh, uh, Shea Kumi's club, buy them food, and tell them, this is what I want you to say. Are you saying that same Amaju cannot call this same no. journalist and tell them, help me to advertise this? No, oh, no. You? 
Some of the other artists. Let me let me let me There are things you said that I cannot argue with because they are facts. But there are things I would also not accept from from this conversation because the same Amaji is not Amaji that puts journalists on a plane to go to the World Cup. So are you telling me Amaji has forgotten their numbers? No way. No way. You can't you can't call you can't call my president and say you call people to lie. Please, I need you to withdraw that statement. No, no, no. Like I will not you know. withdraw it. You know, I will not withdraw it. <laughs> you know, you know. Because, 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 you know, that is. You said this. Problem. You said this. Things that I, I was first. I didn't know, but they were common sense things that I have to accept. But you, you just said that. Personalize this. Thing. Anyway, anyway. No, this I'm not personalizing it. I'm just stating the obvious. Yeah, but I'm a Jew. I do. NFL, NFL. If you go to NFL audit accounts, let me just give you one thing. Good. Go to FIFA website. Go to FIFA website and download. You will see the NFL audited account there on FIFA website. It's published there. Twenty-four something is there. NFL are one of the few federations, and only under Amadou it started. Our audited account is there. Is there on the FIFA website? And if you go there, you will see the FIFA money in there. You will see what the FIFA money was used in that account. The people don't read. No, but it's there. No, I'll send, it's, the, it's, I'll send you the link. I will send you the link if you want to. So you know, you know the way the position of the way people, position of the people take it like that. So we don't. We're not. We're not here to discuss Amadou or discuss NFL. Amadou well, is only the president. NFL. NFL is an institution that works on this institutional ways of doing things. But I'm telling you, NFL. If you go to our alternate account, yeah, is there? If you are, even today, after here, go and check it. I think, there, I think I'll check it. it after this you conversation. See, you, see, you see all. The, you see how much come from FIFA. How much come from CAP. And what are the projects that have been done? And what did that you done? Where the money was spent is there. It's all like it's not anything I know to hear about. You know, okay. so but people don't understand these things. People always want to go for the 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 the, 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 the talk to this one. Talk to this one. No, no, no. I okay. think that is very okay. that's very unfair. Let's eliminate. You know, let's eliminate that know. one. Uh, the final one before yeah. I let you go. I was I was in at a hotel and I was celebrating when we signed the sponsorship of the FA Cup. Two point mm-hmm. five billion naira. I tell you, a mm-hmm. five years deal. Mm-hmm. I was very happy mm-hmm. because it means five hundred million. Yeah. And then a press release was given out, and it says that from the round of sixty-two, is it no from the round of thirty-two? If I'm not mistaken, no, it's actually from the round of sixty-four. From the round of sixty-four, the federation, which you are the second vice president, would take care and cater for every team till the finals. Now, Smart City, this is not me fabricating stories. Smart City played all the way to the quarterfinals and they got knocked out on penalties. And they were not catered for. I have it on record, I have it on tape. And I asked the, the, the president of the club, Zulu, it's like, okay, does, did it go according to the, the release we have? And he said, they, were, they weren't giving a dime for participating yeah. in the cup all the way to the quarterfinals. And I was shocked because I also had the press release. I was there. I, I was the one who asked the question at the coach. Hey, what is the breakdown of this money? It's not just 2.5 billion. But what's the breakdown? Who gets what and who gets what? Now, you see the, can you address that you bit for me? You see, let me, you see, let me, let me clarify. Let me clarify for you. What they, what they, in those days when they were doing the challenge cup and stuff like that, the FA Cup, as we call it, the Federation Cup also, you know, it is the clubs that pay for all the match officials and everything also. Yeah. Part of that cost is the NFL taking care of that of that cost. For the past, from 2017, 18, and 19, that the Federation was was uh, was held, it is only the finalists that were that were giving prize money. That were that were giving money. That is the standard. And the prize money was there. It's always it's, every, every year it's about I think it's about 50 million also. That is shared to the club. The winner get 25, the second one 10 million. I think the, the, the female is, uh, is it, uh, also uh, 10 million, 50 million. I don't know. That is 50 million is always the prize money that is shared to the club, and that has been paid. Only the one for 2019 that is still here, I understand it. But the ones for the, for the 17, 18 has been paid. And, and the NFL had to take care of the referees and everything. And then, and then NFL, when you, when you sign a sponsorship like that, Part of the money also is to develop the brand and to develop the federation also as well to do that. So everything everything was done was done at that level. And you can you can you can you know you know that uh, the only when we signed the when we signed the 
the contract in 2017, which was around July, it was a rush. The program that was done, and the final in November was done. Everybody thought we would do something better in 2018. By 2018, remember, the IT of code did not do anything start till, uh, till uh, around August. Okay. Okay. Is it, is it, is it August or there about when all the Wahala started for the World Cup? After yeah. the World Cup, God the fight, and everything. Arrest. So, so, God's case, nothing was happening. 2019, we are still on the same thing. So, even the sponsor, I may be comfortable in that kind of, uh, in that kind of uh, uh, situation to do because the ITO, ITO wanted to do so much. ITO wanted to do so much for the tournament and stuff like that. But imagine since they signed the, since they signed the tournament, the only thing they are getting is, uh, is bad, is bad, uh, is bad publicity. And to make it worse, every time they will be receiving letters from all the investigating agencies, inviting the county agency, they too are being investigated. So I come and put my money. I come and put my money into a something voluntarily. And I get the system. trouble. And is it for me? <laughs> is it for me to get uh, tax rebate or to get uh, tax compensation? I get a, I get one one funny guy who will come somewhere who doesn't know anything as you're talking about, and he will write a petition and say, "Oh, I tell you, not pay the people that participate or something." The next thing they're inviting I tell you to go and explain what happened. So you know, you get the point. So we are not really in operating in a very good environment where we could have done what we want to do. But I'm telling you, if everything was stable, what would have been done would have been much, much better because the the the, the tournament need to be played play like a normal tournament where we, where we start playing from January to end it in July or, or I mean May or so, so that the sponsor would get the right value. If we are now they do in England, they start playing from uh, January yeah. to, to yeah. May so that the sponsor will get, we have to get the value. So the same thing we, the same thing we are supposed to do. But unfortunately, we are... We are in a very tough, tough uh, situation, but but hopefully uh, things are calming down, and so we could uh, we could go back and do what we wanted to do. Yes, there was a time where we where we we play with the idea that maybe we can give some small support to all the teams that play that play that qualify to certain rounds uh, as a uh, as participation fee and, uh, and stuff like that, you know. So, but we have not. Uh, I don't go to that level because we are not focused on that level. Because even the sponsor was not, we are just, we are just working. If you see the work your friend Amadou is doing, let's try and center to make sure we keep the sponsors. We'll be happy to, we will not have been this bad uh, and, critical about, and critical about it. But at least you can, okay, imagine now, we are not, we are not even started at your call for 2020. And look at the call, the, the lockdown have come, the you know, football have come. So even when you come back, I mean, everything gets better by July or so. I know. It's just, just two months. Value. You can't even work value with somebody that will put a 500, 700 million for you on the table to, to just, do that. Just you know? two so months. So we can look at it from, 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 from both sides. But we should be happy at least we have the sponsors there. And uh, <laughs> too much more. There are better ways to do that. Some of the sponsors, when they are invited, I put my money in music. Will anybody come and invite me to go and explain what I use my money with? Or let me come and give it that my money and do a belly, a belly, a belly. <laughs> they come and give you all the money and do a TV. <laughs> and they give you, they give you, they give you one video. It's a better TV. Will anybody invite them? Will anybody invite them anywhere? Oh. It's their own money. <laughs> okay. All right. See, one of the things that I noticed right now, anyway, you don't have the kind of sports ministers that you, the sports minister that you fought with the last time. I'm hoping that Sunday Dari is a better man, and then the climate is getting better. Hello. Hello. This, Sunday this, Sunday lock, this lockdown Sunday, is not. Sunday, 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 Sunday. It's a global problem. So hopefully we will come back into football, and we will do better. He than thinks. He thinks. He thinks. He thinks private, he thinks corporate, he thinks that this is what we should do, this is what we should do. So if you can get uh, stability and work uh, work under him, this will actually all these things will will, 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 uh, will go away and we will achieve will achieve quite a fantastic thing. You know, one of the one of the, imagine one of the people that do very well, for example, like Mohammed, for example, uh, last time he would just call us and say, Look, let's sit down and see what can we do. It was like Mohammed that championed the the amendment to the MDC code and everything. Which has now protected the domestic sports and domestic football, and going, now the government now there's a law in Nigeria that make it a law that before you show any foreign content, foreign content you must also show the domestic content. Yeah. But the issue is now you must also put you must you must produce the content. If you don't produce the content, 
then network network would not would not would not show it. So you cannot you cannot go and hold any network responsible that they are showing foreign content, they are not showing domestic content. But you, well, you have not produced for them to show <laughs> the domestic content to show. Are you are you producing to the quality where it will not go and blind people on the on the <laughs> network? So you know you know so so it's something that has to be that has to be done. But that is the kind of legislation and uh, regulations that has been put uh, in place, which we which which also we work hand in hand with the minister information and everybody to get it done. But people will not see what the what the we are doing. Only seeing the the bottom line, but those are the foundations being put in place that will last forever, 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 and then people will see the will see the benefit sure. of all this work that we are doing. All yeah. right, thank you very much, Shodiko, for your time. Uh, I mean, from time to time, we we'll yeah. still have to talk and see how it goes. But yeah. thank you very much for no explaining a lot of the details, Wonder. especially concerning the TV rights and then the problems that you guys are facing. We do hope that the climate will be better. Uh, because for me, yeah. I, I like I tell people every day, I'm not one of those who want to run abroad. I want to be here. I think I have a stick that's here. I want to build here, and I want to set up here. So let's hope that the climate really, gets better, yeah. and we all become part a parcel of those who build this great dream that will make Nigerian sports, mm -hmm. Nigerian football, and Nigerian sport at large work very well. But thank you very okay. much for your time okay. and your understanding. And for I, we wish you uh, good. Uh, time as the president, as the chairman of the LMC and the second vice president of the Nigerian Football Federation. We hope for better times uh, around Nigerian football. Maybe when I have Amaju on, yeah, I will ask him questions concerning general, the Super Eagles and the national team. No, thank you very much. I'm for not, uh, thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you very, very much. Thank you for your time. Okay.